I'm meteorologist Brian Peters with your weather extreme video for Sunday, January the 1st, 2017. Happy New Year. Satellite image over the southeastern U.S. features a lot of clouds as a result of the southwesterly flow, bringing a good deal of moisture out of the Pacific. In the meantime, we do have a weak frontal system in the area, as well as a number of little short waves and uh, these little waves on the front that are moving along, causing us to have rain off and on from, uh, from time to time. The uh, southwesterly flow aloft is going to continue today and into Monday. Looks like a big piece of that energy that's down there in um, the northern part of Baja, California, is likely to come out on Monday, and that's going to bring some stormy weather our way. Uh, temperatures across the state are very mild. We range from 45 at Fort Payne to 66 at Mobile, so a 21-degree range across there. The radar is a little bit uh, lighter on precipitation across uh, much of the northern two-thirds of the state at this time. Uh, we do expect to see more rain develop, as you can see back in the the Dallas-Fort Worth area back in Central Texas. The watch warning map is pretty active. Uh, we do have a number of uh, gray areas in the lower Mississippi River Valley that are dense fog advisories. We also have those green uh, areas that you see along south uh, southern Louisiana and into southwest Alabama that are flash flood watches through um, the middle of the day today. Across the northern tier of the United States, we have a lot of winter weather advisories and warnings. The QPF for the next five days through uh, Friday morning is uh, suggesting on the order of um, three to four inches of rain across uh, uh, southeastern Louisiana and the Gulf Coast of Alabama and northwest Florida and into uh, southeast Alabama with uh, rainfall amounts of one to two inches across parts of uh, the rest of the state. So it looks like we're still going to see some pretty good rains. Heavy precipitation folks uh, have uh, outlooked an area for excessive rainfall stretching uh, along that same area from southeastern Louisiana across southwest Alabama and southeast Alabama into central Georgia for day one. That's today. For day two, they have a slight risk over the uh, northern third of Alabama, Tennessee River Valley, and parts of uh, central Alabama as well as uh, north Georgia, as well as an area down in southeast uh, Louisiana, southern Mississippi, and southwestern Alabama. And uh, then on uh, the Storm Prediction Center's outlook for day one, that's today, we have a slight risk over a good portion of the, say, the eastern two-thirds of Texas. Uh, day two, that's uh, Monday into early Tuesday, has changed dramatically. We now have a slight risk covering a large portion of the lower Mississippi River Valley, along with an enhanced risk covering a large part of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. Uh, we'll be talking about the parameters in just a few minutes. And then on day three, there's no uh, uh, severe weather risk areas. All right, the 06 GFS model run this morning and getting sort of tired of all these flipping and flopping of models, but uh, we'll be talking about that out at the end of the period here. We see that we do have a good ridging over the East Coast, as well as that good southwesterly flow with that uh, strong uh, trough and close low uh, over the northern part of the Baja California and northwestern uh, Mexico. And uh, that is keeping us rather unsettled with rain over a good portion of the lower Mississippi River Valley and into the southeastern U.S. For Monday, the, that, uh, the primary energy with that closed low and trough comes out across Texas, and that is going to set the stage for another round of uh, significant weather and some uh, possibility for severe weather, including the threat of isolated tornadoes. Cape values uh, at midday on Monday are uh, in the range of uh, 1 to 2,000 joules per kilogram, so uh, across parts of Mississippi and Alabama, so uh, with dew points in the uh, projected to be in the lower 60s, we're certainly looking uh, pretty uh, primed for the potential for the instability. And uh, that instability does wane a little as we head into the evening hours, but it's still up there. And we also have uh, the helicity values, so the shear values uh, are on the order of 300 to 400 uh, units there, meters uh, squared per second squared. And uh, that certainly sets the stage for that. Uh, primarily, I would say, from late morning, maybe 11 a.m. Monday to around 11 p.m. Uh, Monday night. Uh, maybe extending a little past midnight, potentially. Rainfall is also projected uh, for the total over a good portion of central Alabama to be on the order of uh, uh, one and a half to two and a half inches of rain. 
By the time we reach Tuesday, that little uh, short wave has ejected out into the mid-Atlantic states, and that is helping to sweep things out of the southeastern U.S., but notice the flow is going to be coming out of the northwest, and uh, we're going to be cooling down quite a bit. Uh, we can see that a broad trough begins to develop on Wednesday. The trough continues to dig in and develop on Thursday. So Wednesday, uh, we'll see temperatures probably around 50 degrees or so, but then by Thursday, probably not out of the 40s. Uh, and right now, at least for uh, Thursday, the GFS is very dry. And uh, the GFS stays that way, too. As we get out to Friday, we can see the trough has certainly developed along the East Coast. Uh, and the GFS uh, puts the high center right over um, basically Tennessee and Kentucky and uh, northern part of Alabama, and that keeps it dry. Interestingly enough, uh, the GFS and the European have been flipping and flopping. This is the European for uh, 18Z on this Friday, and it uh, is a little more bullish on precipitation across the southeastern U.S. It's also very much bullish on some winter precipitation. So Right now, we need to get through the severe weather episode first, and then we'll draw our attention to this. But right now, I'm kind of thinking the GFS has a little bit better handle on it and uh, with the drier uh, pattern. We stay uh, pretty uh, cool for Saturday as we begin to come under a ridge that's off to our west as the high begins to move, uh, surface high begins to move off into the Atlantic. But we notice that, uh, once again, a very good return flow out of the Gulf of Mexico is coming up into the lower Mississippi River Valley. So Saturday is going to be another one of those days where it looks like rain will be primarily to our west, uh, but maybe reaching the area before the end of the afternoon. And by Sunday, uh, we can see the uh, uh, kind of the ridging going on to our west and uh, the GFS uh, bringing that uh, rain across the area uh, thanks to the moisture that we're getting out of the Pacific. So it looks like another, uh, maybe potentially a multi-day rain event, a um, day and a half or so, two days of rain. Looking out into voodoo country, uh, yesterday the GFS was sort of uh, calm uh, out into voodoo country. Not that way this morning. 18Z on the 10th of January, and we have a bit of a ridge, but we've got a strong trough approaching us. That trough digs into the east coast, just like this one is doing uh, for the latter part uh, of this forecast, or for the this weekend. And uh, we see that uh, that is digging in. So that uh, is definitely looks really cold for us across the southeastern United States. And by Saturday, the 14th of January, we've got another ridge. But we've also got this big uh, trough out to our west over the, and once again, tapping into Pacific moisture. And then when we get out to the very end of the period, around 372 hours, this pattern looks an awful lot like the pattern that we're undergoing right now. So we may see a repeat with a multi-day event coming out later on uh, around the 16th of January. And of course, with the uh, way we ended 2016, we can use the drought relief. That'll do it for the Weather Extreme video. I expect James Spann to be back with uh, the next edition first thing on Monday morning. In the meantime, stay tuned to the blog for notes on Alabama's weather. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day and Godspeed.